hi guys so uh, in this video we are going to be syncing uh, windows server 2022 data center domain controller to azure active directory so what i did is the following i've already installed a windows server in azure so i'll be using this server as my premises server so i'm not using a physical server i'm only using um, a server which is, which is actually in the cloud that is in azure but i'll be using that server to actually sync my users using that server actually to represent my domain controller on premises because i'm actually doing some training on azure so what i want to do right now is the following i want to actually go to i um, go to the um, azure active directory and here we have the azure at the active um, ad connect so we are going to be downloading the um, the azure ad connect and we're going to going to be installing it on our domain server so when we install it on our, you know, on our domain server, we are going to sync all the users and all our information and environment to the cloud. So what you're going to be doing is the following. Here you can see when you try to download this, it's going to take you to this page and then you can actually just click download. And if I go back again, you can see in um, Azure Active Directory, well, we have just few users which are actually uh, created, which was created in the cloud and not on premises. And you can see the identities of these are just different name entirely and if you look at the principal name they are all different so um this is my domain uh, server and you can see i'm going to use the public ip address using the remote remote desktop protocol to actually connect to this server so i've already connected to the server and here you can see we have um, azure ad connect so if i go to my start menu and i just do let me just search for active directory users and computers so here you can see we have our active directory users and computers and we have some um, built-in um, users so some security groups and here i have some users i created in my active directory environment and then we have some also inbuilt users there's a standard users created when you create when you promote your windows server to a domain controller so what we need to do right now is uh we need to actually double click on this um the azure ad connect to install it it's just actually a straightforward installation so let's just wait let the installation complete and here we go you can see it's completed so we need to actually just agree to the license and terms and then click continue so here we're going to actually use uh, we can actually use the customize or you can actually go for the express installation at this moment you can see we're not going to specify any like using an existing sql server or not we're just going to say um actually just install so let's just wait for this all the required um components to get installed on this uh, machine before we cannot proceed with the configuration so now we need to continue with the configuration of azure ad connect so right now you can see it says um we are now in the users sign in we have the password has synchronization so when you click on the um, password more info, you can see it's telling us that with the password, the user can use the same password they use on premises to actually log in to the cloud. So so what we need to do is we need to actually enable. You can see say this option allows your users to sign in to the cloud using the same password that they use on premises. So we need to also enable single sign on. So by doing that, you can see we have, um, if I uncheck this, so we can, as you can see we have the extra option to do a single um, sign on. So what we need to do right now is to click next. And here it says, enter your Azure Active Directory Global Administrator or Hybrid Identity Administrator credentials. So you need to actually provide it. So let me just enter the info and hope that that is the right one because I have two tenants. And let's see if it's gonna pass through so you can see it says unable to validate credentials due to an unexpected error restart azure ad connect with the interactive um, option to further diagnose this issue so let me just enter the right account and then continue so i was able to verify the um the login credentials and then i actually check because i'm using um, a new environment so if i go back again to my 
to my Azure um, Active Directory environment, you can see we have different accounts. So that device has I've already been joined to the domain, so I was able to use these domain credentials. So let me go back again to my domain server. And here you can see it says um, we need to actually add the, the directory. So I'm going to actually add it and say create a new Active Directory account or we can actually use an existing Active Directory account. So we're going to be using the following uh, account. I'm going to be using the Curve, Curve Global Tech and then enter. This account has to, have to be a domain administrator account. And let's enter the password. And then hit OK. So it's going to uh, you can see that uh, um, the password is actually correct. So let's click Next. And here it says um, you can see it says the Azure um, edit do, the Active Directory domain is verified. You can see it says verified. We can actually re re check to make sure it's verified, and then we can now click Next. And here we are going to actually sync. Say sync all domains and organizational units. That's what we are going to do. You can actually decide to actually sync some specified organizational unit, but we are going to sync all uh, unit, all, all organizational units from Kelv Global um, Tech. So I don't only have one domain. So let's just click next. And here it says use users are represented only once across all domain uh, all directories. So I'm going to actually just select the default and then click next. Here it says synchronize all users and devices. So we're going to say next. And here it says you can see we have some other options here. For example, we have the password write back. You can decide to actually configure a password write back. That is say by enabling password write back, password changes that originate with Azure will also be written back to the on-premises directory. So that is exactly what we want. So when the user changes password in Azure, it will actually be right back again to Azure uh, to our own domain environment. So here it says by enabling group write back, group configured for write back in Azure, they will be written back to your on premises. You want to actually also configure that, but at the moment, okay, let me just configure that and then click next. And here it says group write back um, destinations. You can see it's going to be Kelv Global um, Tech. So we're going to actually select that and then make sure that it's well correct. So let me see as well. I think everything is correct. Okay, I think because we don't have um, the Active Directory schema for exchange, so let me just go to previous and then uncheck the group right back and then just click next to continue. And here you can see we need to also provide the entire domain administrator account to configure your on-premises for us. So we're going to actually enter that account, which is going to be kelvin.johnson and then enter your password. Make sure enter the right password and then hit OK. So you can see the credentials are correct. So now we need to click Next. And now it says, I'm um, start the synchronization process when configuration complete. So it says, Enable staging mode when selected synchronization will not ex export any data to AD or Azure AD. So what you just need to do is to start the synchronization, the synchronization process. And let's click install. So now it is going, this is going to take some few moments for this to get complete. So let me pause this video and come back again when this gets complete. So now you can see it says configuration complete. So Azure AD Connect configuration succeeded. The synchronization process has been initiated. So what you just need to do right now is to just say exit. And if we go back again to our start menu, you can see we have some other components have been installed because so we have the Azure um, AD Connect, we have the synchronization rule editor, also have the synchronization service. So when I start the synchronization service, you can see we can actually start this. You can see it says success, success, completed no objects and success. So all the imports full synchronization have been successful. What we need to do right now is to go back again to our Azure environment and we can actually do a refresh and see what happens. You can see what I'm talking about. All the users are, are right now being synced to Azure without any issue. And if I go back again here, you can see it says um, sync has never been run. So let's try to do a refresh. You can see it says enabled and enabled less than one hour ago. 
so right now you can see that my my domain on premises is working very well without any issue and we have been able to actually sync everything to the cloud so what i'm trying to do is the following i'm actually trying to configure um, um nodio um nodio well let me just go to uh, let me just open let me see if i can open nodio here so i'm actually trying to configure nodio on this environment actually link nodio and my azure tenants together and by doing that if i let me just open this and see um let me try to open it here So by opening Nodio, um, my, you can see we are opening Nodio and, and Nodio Manager. So I'll be able to actually sync Nodio and create my um, my uh, my host pool here in Nodio. I actually make sure that users are able to connect using the virtual machines I create from Nodio and not from the my um, I, from Azure. But I actually need to have things like FS Logics and do some other configuration, sync my uh, on-premises also that my my security group should be able to sync also with Nodio and all this stuff. So that's why I'm actually trying to create a domain environment on-prem. But in the past, I normally create this um, on-premises using like virtual VM Workstation Pro Professional, which I don't, uh, I'm trying to actually not to use it anymore. But using it in Azure, it cost me, it cost me money because you, you pay, they call it pay as you go. So you pay for what you actually use. While the virtual machine doesn't cost me any money, because I'm using a license, of course, I'm using a kind of a free license for like 180 days and for the Windows operating system for like 90 days. So um, at this moment, we've been able to sync all our users to the cloud. So the next step is to actually configure FS Logics on this device and to make sure that everything goes as planned. So thank you very much for taking your time to watch this video. I hope this video has taught you some um, great information. And please, if you've learned something from this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and also leave a comment telling me how you feel. If there's any improvement you think I should do, just let me know and I will, I'm, I will definitely do it. And also don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Bye.